coming all the way. Um, I know it's a bit of a journey to get to this room and you have to avoid a lot of other conference rooms to end up in this one. Um, but it really is a, a kind of a great set of presentations. So we've just had them and I was surprised. I mean, medical claims on paper kind of, it's a bit of a niche use case. It wouldn't appeal to that many people. There's a lot of financial people here, but actually some of the technology that's going under, under the hood is really incredible. So I'll just let yeah. Lawrence present okay. again. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for coming to this session. So um, uh, my name is Lawrence Ma, I'm representing Mali. So I will um, share with you what we've been working on Corda, which is a medical claim uh, system. Um, so a little bit uh, short introduction. We are a uh, based Hong Kong based uh, company. We started about two years ago. Um, we have about uh, 17 people now. Um, two thirds of them are pro blockchain programmers. Um, we are actually one of the uh, training partner of Corder in Hong Kong and Southern China. So if you, if you need training in Hong Kong and Southern China, please call me. Um, so uh, we just did one for AIA actually in, in, in Guangzhou in China. So we are, we're doing both Chinese and English. Uh, we're also a co-organizer of the uh, Corder meetup in Hong Kong. And recently we started a Hong Kong Insure Tech Association because this is what our email is focused on, building Insure Tech. Uh, application on uh, DLT applications. So um, the other thing we're also working with the local university is trying to, um, because one, we realize one of the uh, obstacles is there's a huge shortage of talents in this field. Um, so what we do is we, we're partnering with the university um, to organize um, training, because these are people who are becoming graduating uh, soon, and some of them may go into this field. and then. Uh, the university also see this potential. So for example, um, this month we are running a, uh, a quarter training course uh, with one of the university. We hope to train 30 people. Um, some of them hopefully will be coming out. I think the other thing we, we, we do is we talk to our uh, um, uh, institution in, in, in Hong Kong and they're very uh, willing to take up some of these students uh, to give them internship, for example. I think that's very important. I mean, learning how to code is one thing, but actually doing real projects is another thing. Uh, so this is something that we are we're doing um, uh, in, apart from our application, uh, developing application. So these are this is, um, on the top left. Uh, these are some of the people in the team, key people. Um, so uh, so actually, our journey started uh, actually uh, why why we get into insurance because um, AIA had a uh, uh, global blockchain challenge in 2016. So we entered and we were lucky to be one of the winner. Uh, that's how it gets started. Uh, actually, before we were actually doing things on Ethereum, and then uh, I remember about a year ago, it was in Hong Kong. I think Holder has their uh, meeting there, and then uh, we, were, we were having a booth there. And then I think Barry Charles came to talk to us, say, "You guys should do Holder. <laughs> Go to Holder." Okay. So that's how we started, and then um, in uh, 2017, and now we are um, uh, presenting what we have been doing. So um, this is sort of. Um, a, a recent report by McKinsey on, on what the DLT, the potential impact on, in the insurance industry. And you can see that it's actually across the whole value chain. So today I'm talking about, about claim, but actually it could be things about um, product development, for example, introducing new product, for example, um, based on smart contract. I mean, imagine a more customized product. Imagine you might have someone who might be uh, want a home insurance but he may be going off for one month or two months. He just wants that for a particular time, for example. So these are the things that are coming out. Um, pricing, underwriting, okay, payment. Uh, policy management, okay. As we also uh, did some project on uh, some proof of concept where uh, imagine you have a, a long life, life insurance policy that for ends years and decades. And one of the problems faces people right now is that Let's say the agent that left the insurance company went somewhere else, and then the service degrade. Okay, well, so because they might, some of the the kind of, uh, information are not being uh, lost or whatever. So it's, we maybe putting on a DLT may be a good idea, and and also uh, risk management. For example, reinsurance is another uh, area where, um, for example, you have a big claim, then the insurance company would diversify the risk uh, across different reinsurers. But then, after a few layer, then. Uh, then people don't know what, what's going on when the claim actually come, come up. So this, uh, putting all the reinsurance in on a DLT platform is another thing that people have been working on. 
So uh, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of people in there. So, so we have startups doing that. We have called the insurance, and also we have people like R3, B3I, Microsoft, IBM, all in, in this um, insurance sector. So um, let's talk about what's the current pain point and in the claim management. Um, right now, I mean, um, if you go to see a, uh, let's say, uh, you visit a clinic, okay, so you will uh, have an insurance policy, then you, the doctor do a diagnosis. But then a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of paperwork, right? You, they, the, the, the doctor might fill up all these things, and you bring it back to your company, to HR, and then the HR will file this uh, claim. And then it takes, I don't know, weeks, months to get, get your claim back. So uh, it's a long process, okay? And um, also, there's a, another issue is proof of identity is because it, it, when you visit the clinic, the clinic doesn't how does he know that really you have a policy. So you might be carrying a, some, some insurance company to offer a card for you, like Bupa. But then a uh, card can be easily fake or be, could you give it to someone else, for example. So maybe it's not as, um, so how to prove that then you prove that you have an insurance policy. That's another issue. Another issue will be um, uh, double claim, over claim, because a lot of paperwork, so um, easy to either by error or someone actually tried to fraud the insurance company. So uh, when we were talking AIA, they, they, uh, we were surprised to hear that um, they are operating in 18 countries in Asia, and they, they tell us that just because the fact they are using, um, right now a lot of things are very human, manual driven, um, because of error or maybe overclaim, the amount of money they lost a year is about over a billion US dollars. So it's a, they told us it's a big money for them. Okay. So, um, and also of course, the, another issue will be uh, your healthcare record, okay. It's not portable, right? You visit the clinic, you clinic have your record, okay, then you can't, I mean, if we go to another doctor, the doctor doesn't have that record, so it's not portable, okay? So you, we can th you can think of the, uh, the claim process, the three parts to it. One part is when you actually uh, visit the clinic, uh, so, so the admission part, okay? So they, the clinic might, might, might take your uh, ID and check who you are. Then also there's a part when you finish your diagnosis, when you, uh, the discharge part, the payment part. And then afterwards, the third part, of course, is the claim part. So you can see a lot, right now, a lot of this is a lot of intermediate in it. And then um, the whole process is, is, is fairly inefficient. And then the whole point of hopefully having a DLT is really streamline the whole process. Okay, so, um, so why, why DLT? Um, so the, right now, current way of doing things, like you might have cleaning and, and insurance, okay, to do their own things, so it's independently because they have their own database. Okay, but because of that, I mean, a lot of time, uh, at certain point, when, when they have to share information, okay, then they have a lot of time, they, a lot of inconsistency, they what we call the reconciliation problem, okay. And it's a lot of time, it's very intensive because it's usually done by human, it's very time consuming and error prone. So the idea of having the uh, ledger when you have different stakeholders that hopefully you can have all these things share, okay, before you, uh, uh, I mean, uh, way, way when, when you have the um, way start, so that you can have, which we streamline the process. So that's why we, um, for us, that's why how we, we build this uh, claim management system based on DLT. Um, so it's just, we envision that maybe the, in the future, maybe it's a, a claim, a clinic claim process may go like that, okay? So step one, okay, so uh, imagine now um, your, uh, your patient, okay, will have all his, uh, his ID and his insurance information stored in his mobile phone. Okay, so when he visit the clinic, okay, nowadays the clinic may ask for your, in Hong Kong they will ask for your Hong Kong ID, but, um, and the, all these things. So imagine actually this is actually done, this thing's already in your mobile, so this thing can be actually uh, given to them digitally, together with the proof of that he has the insurance. Where the proof come from, what well, proof come from that fact that the insurance company has actually issued some kind of certificate that is stored on your mobile, okay? And then after that, the patient will receive the uh, treatment, okay? So he prepared a, a claim, the billing information. Then let's say that is done on, while he's being a node on, on say, a quarter network, okay? So we prepare this and he will um, send it to the patient, okay, to um, look at it and see if it's okay. If it's okay, maybe the patient might digitally sign it and then give it back to the clinic. The clinic then will submit this uh, to the insurance company you know, through a smart contract call app on our system. So that now the, um, what is information, the clinic and the insurance company can share this information right away. Now, depending on, on the uh, particular claim, 
in things like um, some of the claim, clinic claim where you're only talking about a few hundred dollars, a lot of these things can be actually automated so that the, the insurance company can actually automate and see whether they, uh, uh, go for a couple of check and then decide to can approve the claim sort of on a real time basis. And then if, once you, you can do that, you can send it back to the uh, clinic and the clinic will relate this information to the patient. And then the important thing is that at that point, the, the patient, the clinic, and the uh, insurance company will, have, will share the same state that they know the particular claim has been approved. Okay, so this is really streamlined of the existing process. Now, of course, if the patient have another insurance policy, okay, maybe he, um, the, uh, the, the one he bought uh, has doesn't cover the bill, so he can have, uh, have to use another policy, okay, and repeat the process. So let me run through a, uh, a sort of a demo for you how, how this goes. So now the, the patient uh, goes into the uh, clinic. The clinic asks ask for some information. So, uh, so the patient will scan the QR code. So, so how it goes, so go there and there's a mobile. So scan the QR code from the clinic, asking for the information. So particular information asks is some personal information. Okay, so the uh, user review it and, and say, okay, I can pass this information. Okay, through the mobile to the clinic. And then he will ask what kind of insurance policy he has. Might, might be a few, so he chooses the one he wants to claim. Okay, again, he will have this, and then uh, look at through it, and then okay, and then he will confirm it. And then the submission, now this is from the user mobile, the patient to the clinic, now with the proof of identification ID and the proof of insurance policy. So the next step is that the, um, uh, the clinic already made a diagnosis, the doctor, now he filled up his, um, uh, his uh, billing information and, and the diagnosis on this uh, template. Um, this is the older version, the new version, everything is just click. Uh, you don't have to type in anything. Um, and once uh, this information has been filled up by the clinic, then he can uh, send it to the uh, user mobile to uh, ask the patient to uh, verify it. Okay, so patient will get those information from the clinic. Um, that information, and he look, can be viewed it, okay. What is diagnosis, what, what's the bill, then if he looks okay, then he said okay, confirm. Then he will send this, sign it, submit it back to the clinic. Okay, the clinic then will receive this, then will, through the uh, call the network, will send to, to the insurance company. So the, the final stage uh, would be that you have, now we have three parties. You have the, um, the clinic system. In the middle will be the mobile phone of the uh, patient. And then you have the insurance company. They will have the same state. So it's all done sort of more or less you know, around real time. Um, of course, uh, that could be disputed maybe in the case that somehow for whatever reason the insurance company re uh, reject the claim. So that of course with that, um, uh, they can, uh, Review it, but then the whole process will be much better because everything now is written on the ledger. Okay. Be much more uh, efficient. Now this is the, the code, the color code for this. Um, now just an overview of our system. Basically there are a few components. So in the middle you have the, um, the network. The network right now, um, our, our project is with, one of the, with AIA actually, so, so it's only one insurance company. But AI is talking to the other insurance company hopefully to bring them onto the network. Uh, that, that, is, uh, that part will be, I will say that part is point because of the so-called multiple claim problem I will sort of uh, illustrate later on. Um, you have the clinic, it could be the different, many different clinic. The, you might, the regulator might be want to share, or share the note. And then you have the notary um, service. And so, so our system basically besides this, we also have, I say, uh, what we call uh, uh, readers, our identity management system. And this is the part where it's stored on the uh, client, uh, patient mobile, where he can just prove his identity and prove the fact that he has insurance policy, okay, to the clinic, okay? And then you have the uh, claim process module where the clinic's going to uh, submit the claim, um, and so forth. Um, so what I, let me highlight some of, the, for some of the feature of this is that uh, with that, certain claim may be able to uh, approved in real time for, actually for the small amount claim, claim. And the privacy issue because of the way that Corda works that it's a sort of point-to-point -point messaging then 
the, only the relevant parties see the, the information, okay? And then um, this also will handle both group and individual policy, okay? So you know, the difference between the group and the individual policy is that in a, in a group policy, the person who went to the see the doctor may not be the guy, the person who's actually the, uh, having the policy. It could be the uh, wife of the, say, the employer, employee. So then, for that, then the information needs to be shared to, the, to her husband, okay, for the confirmation. Um, the other thing is the, uh, with other insurance company on board, I want, uh, then we're able to solve the, uh, the multiple claim problem, okay? Um, let me just um, talk a bit about the multiple claim problem, because this some, at least in Hong Kong, this is an issue where the insurance company are, are looking at it very, very seriously at the moment, because recently, um, there are cases when they find out that certain uh, people have like 10, 20 claims. It's on the same claim, different policy. Obviously, it's fraud there. So, what, so what's multiple claims? So actually, it's, it's not illegal for someone to have more multiple policy. But, the, but supposedly, then, if you have to do that, you sh should actually inform the insurer that you have other policy. But of course, either they are of Canada or, or, or this intentionally, they, sometimes it's, it's just not done. Okay. The reason you, you want to prevent that is that, let's say you have a particular um, medical bill is like, say, $2,000. I mean, you don't want the fact that, but the fact that you have five policy, you actually get back $4,000. That's not allowed. You're not allowed to get back the, um, uh, the claim amount that exceeds the actual cost of the bill. Okay? So that, that, that is a possible fraud there. Okay. So, um, so right now, there are, there are different types of solutions. So one type of solution would be resolved um, by so-called centralized solution, where you have a so-called trusted third party. So every insurance company, so this trusted public RB could be, in, in Hong Kong, I think in this case it would be the, uh, from the Hong Kong Federation Insurers. Then they will be, um, so every or the insurance company will submit this, the claim to, the, uh, to this database. And then they will actually going to check whether there is a uh, multiple claim. But then I think from what I know that some of the insurance companies are quite uncomfortable with this because the question becomes who will run the database and, would own it, and what happens is hack, and who's how do you manage control, and also they are con also concerned about the um, availability. Let's say what happens if that central system is down? Do they, is it they have to wait till this, when someone actually claiming they have to wait till that the system is up? So that issue there, so it's uh, the concern. I think I think some of the uh, insurance companies are rather uh, going uh, looking for maybe a more a DLT approach is better than a centralized approach. So, but um. But, what, but one thing I think um, we, uh, I think it's important, I think we want uh, proposing in our solutions that we also want to address the privacy issue sort of to uh, another um, extra step. And what, what I mean by that is that when, when the client, when the client, let's say he have, I don't know, five policy, okay, to be able to um, address the double claim. So somehow you have to share this information that this client have policy from insurance company A, B, C, D, E. Now, but the thing is that the insurance company A, B, C, D, E probably do not want, okay, insurance company A probably doesn't want insurance B, C, D, E to know that this patient has insurance company with them, okay, this sort of privacy, okay? So how will you do that, I mean, in order to solve the uh, multiple claim, because somehow you have to share information. So it turns out there's a cryptography code coming in, those, it turns out there's a special kind of signature, okay, actually called ring signature, I think being used in some of the cryptocurrency right now, where, um, the idea is that when, let's say, when uh, uh, the patient claim at uh, insurance company A, insurance company will do some signing, okay? So this is not your usual uh, digital signature, the, pri the private public key. Instead, this is a special kind of signature called ring signature, where you know that um, this signature comes from this group of people, say this group of insurers, you know that. One of them, but you don't know who that is. But also, also the fact that if indeed needed, uh, it can be, uh, the one who actually signed can be with himself. Okay, so, so for that, okay, then so that when the, uh, the first claim will be made, so, so this say at insurance company A, so sign it, then next time the same claim come, come in, so the second insurer will have known that someone has already, that this person has already made a claim, okay, from someone else, don't know who that is, someone. But also not only that, also he will know that um, the amount that he's claimed this time plus the amount he claimed before add up will exceed the bill. That is also what we know. Not the exact amount, but the amount, the fact that they're adding up will exceed that. So we believe that having something like that will actually further protect the privacy 
uh, to solve the multiple claim problem. So the um, so briefly the DLT so we'll be using Corda. So um, the reason um, being that uh, with the uh, uh, the fact that uh, we'll address all the issues of security, scalability, the uh, the privacy, and then can easily integrate with the system, and then to be fully integrated with. Um, so all the all the claim, all these things could be put it uh, together onto the um, the call apps. Um, so for the digital, uh, so our other part of the solution will be our digital management system called Vida. So what it does is that um, uh, the few features, first of all, is self-solvent, meaning that every time when the personal identification has been given, you need to have the consent of the, the data owner, which is the user. Okay, this is one thing, so self-solvent. And the fact that uh, there will be uh, all these at, at, uh, the patients, all his credential, like whether he has a policy, will be attested by the relevant party, which in this case will be the insurance company. And so that when a third party, let's say a clinic, that they can actually verify all these things, okay? Um, also the other thing I think, now of course now it with, uh, it, with the existing technology to do that, like, like certificate, okay? But the problem with the certificate right now is that we have all this information certificate, all the information are reviewed, okay? So when we talk about so data minimization or, or privacy, that is not really done um, properly. So instead, what the system will do is actually you can choose whatever you want to review instead of the whole certificate. So you can choose this review, um, just certain thing that is just as required by the uh, third party, say the clinic, to verify, okay? Not, not the whole, whole detail, I think that's important, okay? So hopefully by, by doing this, okay, uh, then people who bought one policy, okay, then later on, if we buy the next policy, then he had, can use all these uh, attestation which is already done because the first time you might have to do a lot of, lot of dirty work, like actually physically do, uh, going to and, and show the ID. But let's say once it's done once, the second time, okay, then you, have to, you don't have to repeat the process. And the other thing I think is also important is the revocation. When certain policy, let's say you, you are not, no longer with this policy, so we revo there's a revocation. I think with the current certificate, uh, sometimes this is not hand handled very well because sometimes not, um, the revocation is not timely and all these things, but with a, D a DLT, I think this will offer much better solutions. Uh, so roughly, this is how, how, how it might work. So the, the, uh, the system of two parts, one is the attestation part. So, so you have a user, okay, and then you have rare data, which could be an uh, insurance company, okay, or it could be, um, let's look at the example, then may, so then, the user will have input as his, his credential, which is encrypt, um, and then we'll pass it to the validator. Validator could look at it, okay, satisfy with it, then digitally sign it, okay, and then, um, and then put this information onto a DLT, okay. So that next time um, when the user, okay, needs someone, uh, say, go to the clinic, and the clinic wants to verify it, then the user, okay, can sort of say, Say uh, the clinic required a statement about uh, who you are and what policy you have. So, you, you, so that's a statement. You create a statement. You, the whole uh, the the user, okay, with his mobile, can generate a proof of that he has these credentials, and pass it to the inspector. The inspector can run this, okay, and then compare to whatever been stored onto the uh, DLT and see whether indeed the holder is what he say he is, okay. Now, this actually, this uh, system actually is, you can, it's not just for the um, going to see a doctor. Imagine it could be the um, a holder can want other credential. Maybe it's a, if it's a student, it could be his academic credential. And then in that case, then the university may be the someone who go validate this credential. And then the, the inspector could be someone when you're applying for a job or he is applying for graduate school. I mean, many, many, many other applications. Now, so, um, so one thing that we are uh, quite excited about, I think that we are uh, building our, um, in our roadmap is to include zero knowledge proof into this, the, the system, the VEDA system. Um, I think the whole point is the, it's a way to, um, this is a new technology to enforce certain harness behavior, okay, to ensure certain things are valid, but at the same time, you don't want to view a lot of the, uh, sensitive details. So this is, again, it's a privacy issue which is getting more important. 
So of course now the um, so knowledge proof has a lot of challenge because, for example, the amount of computing power it, 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 and uh, you need and then the trusted set are still issues. For example, now now um, uh, none of the implementation so far is uh, is efficient enough. It can run on mobile. Um, it, it cannot be done at this moment, from what I know. Um, so what are people? So there are actually people are doing this. Um, uh, Sack Cash, which is a, one of the cryptocurrency. Um, what they do is that on, on, on Bitcoin, so you know it's a public ledger, so everyone would know that, uh, let's say, certain accounts send certain amount of money to certain account. That information is known to everyone. But with Sack Cash, with this technology, what they can do is they can hide the uh, information in the sense that you just know someone has sent some amount of money to someone at, at a particular time, but you don't actually, there's a proof of that, but you don't know actually what is the, the, the sender. Okay, um, uh, so I think uh, the other, uh, uh, the JP Morgan Chrome is also trying to integrate this into their, their, their blockchain. And then ING recently received, um, revealed that they have, uh, this is on the Ethereum network, where they have a very efficient uh, so-called range proof. Now let me take a look, go a little bit, why, what, what's this whole thing about, what is this trying to do, a still knowledge proof? So I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a professor and a student it's a grad, young, young, young professor, and let's say she proved the latest, biggest problem, okay? And he wants to show it to the professor. Um, that's fine, I mean, you can just, she can just give her the whole proof. Uh, she can give her the, his whole proof and verify. But then what happened, the professor is bad and just say, this is my, just take it away and just claim this is my proof. But it turns out there's a way to help to solve the problem is that they can do, it turns out they have a protocol, they can just do some communication to party in action, and then at the end of this interaction, then if indeed the uh, Dr. Alice had the proof is correct, then professor will actually accept that. But they learn nothing. You just learn that the thing is true, but then nothing about how the actual proof. But if the claim is false, then the professor will actually reject it with a high probability. Okay. So this is the original from a work in 1984 with two MIT uh, cryptographers. And then the, later on, they, it turns out that you can everything you can prove at all can be proved in zero knowledge. Okay. Two weeks later, and then, and then that's the excitement because the theory being out there, and then now with the DLT, with the privacy, we can definitely see a lot of very interesting questions, and then a lot of people are spending a lot of effort trying to. So now the question now is not the matter whether you, the theory part is how do you implement it to be efficient, and to make sure it is uh, security. Okay, so let me give you an example of how they can apply the credential. Let's say James Bond wants to see the doctor when it was the clinic. So, so James Bond. <laughs> I need something for my my six, <laughs> okay? <laughs> to say that okay, his name is James Bond, where his dress is, birthday, da da da. Now of course James Bond can bring this to uh, M uh this to the clinic and sell that. Okay, my say six stick, say that. But then then James Bond are revealing a lot of information, including where he lives. Okay, okay, and that's not very good. So uh, maybe a new model we will call anonymous credential. So again, um, my six give James Bond his credit, but. When he go to see this, the clinic, actually, instead of before you have, you see all the everything, you just say, see, I have a, some credential from MIT saying that my age is bigger than 21. Nothing else is revealed. Now this is, uh, this thing I'm just important because um, a lot of time, I, I, you think about this, you, someone, you want to prove that you're about 21, let's say you want to buy, go in the casino, you want to go to so do certain things. But let's say um, in Hong Kong, for example, the way to show that you're above 21 right now, they want you to show you your, them your Hong Kong ID, which on the Hong Kong ID has your birthday, your name, and your uh, Hong Kong ID number. And in Hong Kong, you have those information plus the mobile number. And then, and then it goes to the wrong guy, it can do a lot of damage, okay, this kind of information. But the fact that he just, you just want to show that I'm above 21, you don't need to know my birthday. You definitely don't need to know my name, blah, blah, blah. blah. So, so in terms of show knowledge or this anonymous credential, you, you can actually have a proof of that where the person who see that will actually will say, will, will, will believe that it's true, that you are definitely about 21 because it, it comes from MI6. So you can check that it's MI6 actually signed, signed this thing. But then that's all he knows, okay? Not nothing else, doesn't know his birthday, okay? Um, so that's, that is the, uh, the identity uh, system that uh, we have this attestation and also we have verification, but we are sort of adding in the still knowledge, hopefully to make these, the whole thing uh, more pri private. 
Um, the other thing uh, we are sort of doing, well, this is of course a node tree node network in the quarter. But um, the other thing that we are, uh, it does this thing, but one thing we are actually in Hong Kong, for example, we are talking to a lawyer and wanting to join our, our, our network. Besides doing the verifying the very preventable spending, the other thing that we are interested to get the law in is because, for example, um, you want to do this identity system. Let's say you want to uh, prove your, let's say your main mundane identity, like, like your actual nationality. Okay, of course the first place to actually attest to that actually is the Hong Kong government actually, because they are the one that really um, ha uh, has the, the original source. But of, and unfortunately, Hong Kong government is still uh, a little bit slower in doing that. So, so we are thinking of, you know, uh, to have this, maybe have a more a transition where you have lawyer, maybe they can test to some of these, become the uh, tester for some of these uh, identity. Because, you know, by law, actually, the, the lawyer does have this kind of uh, um, authority to do such a thing. So that's why we are sort of bringing a lot of lawyer to sort of be uh, the uh, tester for, for, for credential. And then, and then imagine the, the identity system uh, that I talk about, once you have different uh, tester coming into place, then, then later on when we go to have a new kind of credential, then you can actually use not just the uh, original source, but you can use previous credential that have been attested. So you can, so build, you can leverage and build, 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 build the whole system out of that. Okay, so, um, so let's have some real what kind of impact the, uh, the system has. Of course, for the insurance company, we see that it will actually will really um, automate, hopefully automate the process and really reduce the manpower, reduce the uh, paperwork and, and reduce risk, fraud risk, okay? And for the patient, of course, the fact that uh, he can have a claim much, get his claim back much earlier is, is, a, very, is a big plus. But also the fact that um, he, every, then when he goes to, um, uh, say, a clinic, then he just doesn't have to show all these things uh, anymore. He just have to use his mobile and also, for onboarding for other kind of insurance policy, maybe make it much easier because all these things can only have dirty work to do once. And after that, you can use this uh, so -called attestation and then show that you have all these uh, required credentials. And then for the clinics, of course, um, you have uh, less paperwork to do, okay? And also, the information authenticated, so you know that, that this client does have this policy, okay? Because of the uh, dental system that we just talked about. Um, and then um, finally, I just want to look at our sort of roadmap. So we have sort of uh, been doing on the claim settlement and identity. So other things that we are looking at um, on the pipeline will be with the policy management system I mentioned is that when you have much long life, long policy, okay, the fact that um, uh, when the agent left or things like that, and you have, and then so hopefully some of the policy can be managed easier on the on 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 ledger. And then also loyalty and engagement is um, due to loyalty point. Um, we realize that sometimes with the insurance company they give out loyalty point and then the experience that is a lot of time you, you're not able to use loyalty point because it's, because it's, um, uh, it's not the thing that you want. But imagine that uh, you have this uh, DLT where you can convert the loyalty point into say another insurance like for example you have a a live insurance, how would you maybe you convert into a travel insurance, okay, and then give it to the um, uh, your your the insurance company clients, and or maybe to to head of his family with sharing this because the fact that we have the identity and the fact that we have the ledger, so this can be done quite easily. Um, so, what are our, our pipeline milestones? So right now we are um, hopefully our beta version of the system, including the identity, will be completed this quarter, and then we want to do a soft launch uh, with a, a few insurance companies together with a few clinics, hopefully next quarter. And then we are looking to have a um, civil knowledge version maybe in the third quarter. Um, so in summary, so our, our system try to address the whole process from the payment issue from the onboarding to the payment and to the claim. And then we speak on DLT uh, so that the relevant stakeholder can really have maintained a consensus, okay, um, about existence and the status of the claim, okay. And we look to want to solve the multiple claim problem and to, uh, to, to prevent the privacy using the signature I just mentioned. Um, again, we hopefully, the, uh, using the zero knowledge, the, um, the, pi the patient insurance privacy is being more protected uh, 
I mean, I, uh, there are different ways. I think I know Arthur is trying to introduce the SGX as one way, but we think that uh, that's a more hardware, but I think sometimes a software solutions also have its own advantage. So um, that's why we're working on the zero knowledge. And then this thing, will, will, uh, the identity will streamline on the onboarding process, okay, and to verify the patient identity and the eligibility claim. And then we, um, right now we are co being audited by the uh, different experts in the, uh, in the field between the code and also the crypto protocol. Okay, so this is what I want to say today. So thank you. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about the uh, algorithms you're using for the zero knowledge proof stuff? Okay. It's. Um, it's not a C case now. It's basically, basically uh, based on the more traditional using um, uh, groups with bilinear pairings. Uh, it's faster. But although I would say that, uh, I can tell you that CK Snark, uh, SACCATCH, and Moving Up work hard because they are, they still the, the power, the still slow way. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, but right now, there have been some big, we actually, um, we are working with a team of um, cryptographers in Hong Kong and China. Um, I think we are, uh, we might be doing a similar thing with CKs now. We are actually making some breakthrough. Of, um, I think the initial calculation, we are able to improve at least two or three order magnitude, which might make it possible to push on the mobile. I don't know yet, we are still testing it. The idea, one of the few things is that there are some breakthrough of uh, finding a new curve, using a new curve. To, uh, and then um, also, before there's something, uh, you know that they, to do this thing, uh, what they're doing, they need to convert the thing with some kind of um, Boolean circuit, replica circuit, and we find there's a way to bypass one of the Boolean, so we don't need the Boolean circuit. Go directly to the replica circuit, and that is some redu redu definitely reductions. Um, and also, I think right now the version the the, the zero knowledge that we're using is the most traditional. It doesn't need to uh, use the assumption of that uh, CK now the knowledge exponent, which is a uh, I have an issue where some of the people are not very convinced that it's the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, will you, are you planning to publish anything uh, about these algorithms when you're finished? Yeah, sure. Um, but but on the other hand, we're filing patent for, for, for this. Uh, we believe that, um, uh, I, I think it's very interesting because talking to group talkers, I mean, I mean, a lot of these things sort of been around but not because they're no very passion use case. They, they, now because of this, and then they're forcing them really think hard to really mm. make it very efficient. I think that's very very interesting thing what going on because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and we, I, I think the um, uh, because of the privacy issue, I, I think um, with, if 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 the indeed the zero knowledge is, is come to a point that is very usable, I, I think. Uh, it will be very uh, interesting, I think, in, in the development, I think. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. I've, I've got a question about yeah. the ring signatures. Yeah. Um, and my question, I think, is very simple. Yeah. It is, um, wh how are you managing the ring signatures? So what I mean by that is, yeah. um, have you replaced the existing uh, quarter transaction signing mechanism in some way or, or modified that? Or is the signature itself part of the payload of the state uh, that, See, that, that um, you're handling right the signature now, as, as quarter really data? I think we with the quarter yet. So right now it's sort of an independent system. But I think you're right. I think maybe after we have, we, I think that's the thing we should look at. But we're, we haven't really integrated with the quarter at this moment. Yeah. But I think something that I think we we're looking to work on here. Yeah. Um, is it something that you Arthur interested in the ring signature? I mean, the problem, yeah. the use case that you described yeah. that, um, you know, if a claim yeah. has been made against yeah. an insurance company, yeah. uh, against, well, with the yeah. policy against yeah. an insurance company, yeah. that other insurance companies would want to know about that. Yeah, but, but then they don't want to know that, that this person had a claim from AIA. The identity yeah. Yeah. of yeah. the yeah. insurance yeah. company. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, but ring signatures uh, so are really de designed to solve that, that problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's an interesting use case, which, yeah. Uh, I've heard before in uh, trade finance as well. I yeah. mean, it is similar. Yeah, trade finance also. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, before, I think, uh, one of Morano, Morano, crypt cryptocurrency using ring. But, uh, but I think, the, I thought about the ring thing. I think one of the challenges right now is 
um, the sum of the algorithm is not inf efficient enough to do it on the mobile. But I think what we're doing, I think, is, is can do it on the mobile. When you actually, I think we also we always believe that the, the user, okay, um, actually using it probably mobile may be a good platform to do all these things. Yeah. It might be a good fit some of the projects involved voting. Yeah, voting. Yeah, yeah, voting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.